why going for UFC double champ status ruins careers. And I know that, you know, you see a lot of people now where it's like, where can Islam Akachev go for double champ? Where can so-and-so go for double champ status? You know, can he get to be a double champ status? When's he going to get a shot at double champ status? But if you really look and go through and see, you know, all the people that either went for double champ status and got it or were unsuccessful, it pretty much always pans out badly for them. The rest of their career always goes downhill. And we'll look at all the fighters that have went for it successful and unsuccessful and talk about it and talk about why it does ruin careers. But before we get into it, make sure to like, sub, do all that YouTube shit. It really, really does help me out a ton. Ask for a reason, because, you know, first of all, there's not a whole lot of people that, you know, have gone for double champ status in UFC history. I thought there was way more. You know, you hear about it now a lot where it's like he's going for double champ. He's going for double champ. Obviously, you have a guy like Volk going for double champ. But. There's actually not that many in history, and there's very few that have been successful. Starting off with someone that was unsuccessful in his bid to get double champ status, you've got Israel Adesanya. And to tell you, you know, he was going super, super well in his career before he went up to fight Jan Blakovic. He was 19-0. He was, you know, on pound for pound list. He was regarded as that guy at 185 pounds. If he stayed at 185 pounds, I couldn't see him losing any time in the future. But he did deserve his double champ status shot. You know what I mean? If nothing else, he did deserve it. There's some fighters where it's like, no, 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 he didn't deserve it. He didn't do enough to get it. He deserved his double champ status. And, you know, he did get it, but he lost it. He was 19 and 0 before. And then after in the in the fights after he went four and three. And obviously he lost to Sean Strickland. He lost to Alex Pereira. He lost to Jan Blakovic. And he kind of cleaned up some people that he'd already beat before. You know, Robert Whitaker, Marvin Vittori, Jared Cannonier. He beat a lot of the guys that he had already beat before. And his career has just gone downhill since then. We've seen him, you know, not tarnish his legacy, but his legacy has definitely gone down, losing to a guy like Sean Strickland, losing to a guy like Alex Pereira. So you have to look at Israel Alessandro and say if he stayed at 185 pounds. He'd probably end up being the GOAT of 185. I know that Anderson Silva is in a lot of people's minds the GOAT, and he is definitely the GOAT right now. But if you look at Israel Adesanya, he's not that far off Anderson Silva. If he didn't go for that double champ status, if he just stayed true and, you know, stayed at 185, stayed just clearing out the division, where could we see him now in terms of the GOAT conversation at 185 or maybe even the GOAT conversation overall? Let me know what you think would happen with Adesanya if he didn't go for double champ status. After that, we have Amanda Nunes. She's one of really the only successful ones that has done like the double champ thing, but in women's MMA, it's just different. It's just different. Like she did lose to Juliana Pena after, which is a bad loss, but then she got back her loss and then two more fights and retired. So you could say that it went well, you know, Amanda Nunes, but women's MMA and men's MMA is different. In women's MMA, it could work. Going for double champ could 100% work. Even going for triple champ might work just because like the skill level is just a little bit lower. There's just a little bit less competition. Like if you look at the challenges that Amanda Nunes has faced, Irina Aldana in her last fight, like dog shit, dog shit, dog shit, dog shit. And I can appreciate, you know, her skills as a fighter, but just not on the level that Amanda Nunes is. There's just such a big gap. After that, we have Conor McGregor. Another one where you guys might be thinking, well, that's a successful double champ, right? He didn't defend at 145, didn't defend at 155, went to fight Floyd. Obviously, you know, successful and monetarily. Conor McGregor, you know, made the money, got all the money from that Floyd fight. So would he do it again if he was given the option? 100% he'd do it again. But when he came back to MMA, he's never been the same. He's never been the same in mixed martial arts when he came back. Obviously, he came back for that 155 fight. Khabib lost it. Has beat Donald Cerrone, but that was, you know, like a beat up Donald Cerrone. That was like, Donald Cerrone, you've been in the company for so long. You've done so many good things for the company. We're going to toss you this money fighting Conor McGregor. And Conor McGregor smoked him. And then after that, lost to Dustin Poirier, lost to Dustin Poirier. So he's never been the same. His career in terms of MMA, his legacy in terms of MMA, in terms of like GOAT conversations has gone down a lot ever since he took that gap. And it's another one where it's like he was in my what if video where I was looking at if he could have been a triple champ. Like there was these conversations were flowing for Conor McGregor after he beat Khabib Nurmagomedov. After that, we have TJ Dillashaw. TJ Dolishaw, after he went for double champ status, obviously he didn't win it. He lost Henry Cejudo at 125. After that, he went one and two, busted for steroids, ruined his legacy. And you know what? I'm a TJ Dillashaw hater. I don't hate on really any fighters, okay? Unless you do some super fucked up shit. If it's just like, oh, he has boring fights. Oh, I don't like his personality. You know what I mean? I'm never going to hate on a fighter for that. You can hate on them if you want, but I'm never going to hate on them hate on a fighter for that I like to enjoy the mixed martial artists and you know enjoy what they can do and not just shit on them like other people do but tj dillashaw i'm gonna shit on him because he ruined cody garbrandt because he was cheating taking epo you know taking all these performance enhancing drugs to make himself better and he ruined a fighter because of it he ruined cody garbrandt you know he ruined cody garbrandt's ability to take a shot and some people might say you know well his chin wouldn't his chin would still be bad even if tj dillashaw didn't ruin it but 
We don't know that. We don't know if Cody Garbrandt's chin would just be bad. Sometimes your chin goes and you just can't get it back. And that's what happened for Cody Garbrandt against TJ Dillashaw. Ruined him. TJ Dillashaw, after it though, ruined his legacy. Got smoked by Henry Cejudo inside one round. So that's another example of a guy who, you know, went up for that double champ status. Was like, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. He could do, he could do, he could do. Actually, he's the only one that went down for that double champ status. He went down to 125. He went down to 125. But before he busted for steroids, before obviously all of that at 135, he was, he was considered one of those guys. The only guy that he lost to was Dominic Cruz. You know, he beat Cody Garber and he beat a load of guys at 135. He could have been potentially in 135 pound GOAT conversations, obviously, without the steroids. He was going to bust for steroids at some point, obviously, anyway. But, you know, where he was at 135 compared to his fall from Grace going down to 125, going for that double champ status is kind of, you know, crazy. Next up, we have Henry Cejudo, who obviously beat TJ Dillashaw at 125 and then went up to try get a 35 belt, which he did do successfully. So he's one of the guys that, you know, successfully got it done. After that, he had one defense, then he had one loss, and then he retired. Now he's came back and he's, you know, fighting against Merab. He had that shot against Aljo, lost it. Will he win against Merab? Who really knows? If he wins against Merab, I could 100% see him getting a title shot. But if he doesn't, he's probably going to retire and he's going to go into this bracket of guys that, you know, got that second belt and then didn't really work. He couldn't really defend it. Like, he couldn't really do much with it. He couldn't really progress further in his career. But still, Henry Cejudo has obviously had a legendary career with that Olympic gold medal and getting two belts in the UFC. So you can't really dismiss Henry Cejudo that much. But you can say that after he got that second belt, did his career go downhill? Yes, for sure. After that, we have DC Daniel Cormier. Obviously, you know, he had his run at 205, ran into John Jones. You know, it wasn't exactly smooth sailing at 205. But anybody apart from John Jones, he pretty much beat them. And there was a whole no contest and everything. But then eventually, after his dominance at 205, he went up to 260 to face a guy in Stipe Miocic, who's probably the heavyweight GOAT. There's some arguments to go both ways, but Stipe's probably the heavyweight GOAT. And he beat him. He beat him quite convincingly. So you're thinking, you know, this is another double champ success story. What did he do after that? He did beat Derek Lewis. You know, he got a round two choke against him, rear naked choke. So he's got one defense, got the belt. But then after that, see, it all starts to go downhill. Face Stipe again in a rematch, lost to him. And then in the trilogy, once more, he lost to him. So he had problems with Stipe after getting that first win against him. And, you know, although Stipe looks, you know, kind of bad right now, he looks kind of old right now. He was a monster in that era. So going up to 260 to face a guy like Stipe was not, was not an easy task. And then after he lost those two fights, he just retired. He retired in 2020. So it's another case we can kind of put it in the thing where we go, got that double champ status. And then his career just went downwards, 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 which is unlucky for DC. For DC, there is some reasons he started MMA super late. So, you know, the longer he was in the game, the more he was aging. So it's kind of a different story for DC, but still the same thing applies. You know, it's not just a coincidence for every single one of these fighters, and it's why getting double champ status ruins careers. After that, we have John Jones. John Jones and Alex Pereira, I'm going to put them both in the same thing, where it's too early. It's too early. Going off other people, we're going to see it, and we're going to be like, yeah, no, their career's probably not going to go well, but John Jones will probably go, one and it will probably beat CPA and then retire. I don't think he takes that Tom Aspinall fight. And Alex Pereira, who knows? Who knows what Alex Pereira is going to do? Who knows how that's going to plan out? So for John Jones and Alex Pereira, they both obviously won their belt super recently. Alex Pereira at 295. John Jones at what, 290, 289 or something like that. But it's too early for both of them. It's too early to decide whether it's, you know, ruin their careers or not. And I don't think John Jones can ruin his career. But after that, we have Max Holloway. Max Holloway is a guy that you might be thinking, when did he go for double champ? Did he ever actually go for double champ? Technically, it was interim champ. You know what I mean? He went for that interim champ shot at Dustin Poirier. But the process is still the same. The results are still the same. You know what I mean? Like, what you think is still the same. But the idea of going up, moving up a weight class of that double champ status, you know what I mean? It's still the same idea and it still has the same principle. Max Holloway, after, went four and four. So going into that fight, you know, he was on a super, super fat win streak. I think he was 21 and three in mixed martial arts. Had just got the featherweight strap. He went up to get that interim gold strap at lightweight. Went four and four and then one and three in his next four. So one and three in his next four and four and four overall. And if you look at the guys he's lost to, obviously he's lost. He's lost to Dustin Poirier. He's lost to Volky. He lost to really, really good guys. But it's still, he was on top of the world before that. At 145, you know, he had just gotten his belt at 145, moves up against Dustin Poirier, who has, you know, that interim championship, gets beat up by Dustin Poirier, loses to Volkanovski twice, kind of cleans up some of the good people out the division, at Yair Rodriguez, you know, at Chang Sung Young, the Korean zombie, you know. So he's beat a lot of guys, but he's never been the same after going for double champ. 
After going up to 125 and getting beat up by Justin Poirier, he's never been the same guy. He just hasn't. So it's another case of where he goes up for double champ status and it ruins him. After that, we have GSP. GSP is one of the only guys who you could probably say he got in and got out. You know what I mean? He retired right after. I think we're going to look at GSP in terms of his double champ, similar to John Jones, where, you know, coming off a retirement, coming off a long layoff, comes back, wins that 185 shot and then retires. So that's what GSP did. If you don't know, obviously was really, really dominant at 170 pounds, was, you know, pretty much like the only at 170 pounds for a good few years, then retired, went up to 185, beat Bisping, took his belt, and then retired again. It, obviously, there was that whole saga with Dana White, where he, Dana was like, you have to defend if you win the belt, and GSP was like, yeah, 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 I'll do it. And then as soon as he won it, he was like, yeah, I'm out here, I'm retiring. After that, we have BJ Penn, the prodigy. BJ Penn Obviously, you know, one of the most talented mixed martial artists ever in terms of what he could do. If you're lucky, you know, he got a black belt in three years. That's pretty much unheard of. He was the first non-Brazilian to win the black belt jiu-jitsu worlds. So a guy that, you know, is supremely talented, obviously super, super talented in the cage too, came into the UFC and started knocking people out with technically like no training. He was only really doing jiu-jitsu. So if he can't do it, nobody can. And you're going to think, well, surely he did it. Maybe did it. Maybe got it right. Three and nine after Lou, after he went for it. Three and nine. Not not nine wins, three losses. Three wins, nine losses. So obviously after that, he got smoked. You know what I mean? Yes, some of those losses were further on into his career where he was getting kind of old. But still, the principle applies where he was, you know, going, he was going super, super well. Went up to try to get that double champ status and fell right flat on his face. It just didn't work. And then after that, you know, he was just an old BJ Penn where it was like, BJ, can you retire, bro? Please, we don't want to see you get beat up, get KO'd. Please, BJ, just retire. Finally, we have Alexander Volkanovsky. I think the most recent guy that went for double champ status. And this is another example. This is another one that we've seen. Obviously, we'll have to see how Volkanovsky does when he goes back down to 145. And in most cases, when you have a guy who, you know, goes up and then comes back down, they look okay. But when they go up and try stay there, then you're just kind of in limbo because you can't be the champion and then you don't want to go back down. You don't want to cut all that weight again. For Volkanovski, though, against Islam Makachev, obviously going up against a pound for pound number one guy, going up against an elite, elite guy. He put on a good performance in his first fight. He put on a good, good performance in his first fight. But the second fight got knocked out. He got knocked out bad, you know, head kick round one. So going for double champ status for Volkanovski just didn't work and it doesn't work. We'll have to see how he does against Iliad Ward. This is really another one where, you know, you're almost on the verge of too early. You're almost where you're at that stage where it's like, is it too early to decide if Volkanovski's double champ thing worked or didn't work? You're almost at that stage. We'll need to see him against Ilya. We'll need to see him against Max Holloway, another guy that went for a double champ status. Maybe that can cure the double champ thing for Max Holloway if he gets to fight Volkanovski, who also went for double champ status. But this one's one where we're almost at that too early stage. Let me know below that you think the fights coming after this will ruin Volkanovski after going for that double champ status. Make sure to like, sub, do all that YouTube shit. It really, really does help me out a ton. And also make sure to sub if you're enjoying the videos and i will catch all of you boys tomorrow peace